This is episode five of Pitching It With Ben. In this episode, I am joined by quite possibly, and very likely, the winningest golfer in the world right now, Mina Haragai. Winner of four of her last five professional tournaments, we talk about what's working in her game right now. (laughs) It's basically everything. Mina also talks about a significant swing change that's given her more distance. What the break from LPGA golf has been like, and how excited she is to test herself against the best in the world again. We also take a look back at her career to this point, and she shares a few stories as well. All this and more on episode five. And if you could all do me a favor, please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. These amazing athletes and people deserve and need their stories heard. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy episode five. Hello. How's it going? Good. How about you? I'm doing well. So, first of all, nice to meet you. I can't believe um, we haven't crossed paths over the last uh, three years that I've been out here on the LPGA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what what's what you been up to? I mean, I know a little bit of what you've been up to lately. A lot of uh, winning. We'll get to that. <laughs> get to that in a minute. But what's what's this break kind of been like for you? Um, I've been fortunate enough here in Arizona where, um, the golf courses didn't close. So, um, just, I've been doing the same thing, just practice playing, um, uh, working out with my trainer. We were doing, um, outdoor workouts while the gyms were closed. So honestly, nothing, um, was that much different for me. (laughs) Well, I mean, other than a little less travel, I'm sure the travel is a little less right right that's, that's <laughs> true. i haven't been on a plane in a very long time <laughs> so i mean that's pretty have you always been are you been based out in um arizona for a while uh, i've been here about um 11 years okay. so yeah oh, wow. so yeah so, yeah. <laughs> so i mean just like it's nice that you have the cactus tour or like mini tours places you can compete you just mm-hmm. happen to be like live in an area that you don't have to go very far to find competition that's kind of nice yeah it's uh it was super nice actually um i've played in cactus tour events um before in previous years then um like i'm i'm super happy that they were still going during um covid so it's been good yeah okay so we'll get to this so first of all it's like looking at these numbers are pretty um wild and maybe you can shed some light on like all this amazing play. So like, what did I see? You're a hundred and three under par in your last 18 rounds or something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? And four wins in your last five events. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your last two wins, you won by 16 and 14 shots. Yep. <laughs> just it's just uh i don't even know like you don't even see junior tournaments like that like you're playing professional events and like what's what's clicking what's or what is what's working everything i guess uh, yeah <laughs> ba- basically everything um i i hit i'm hitting all my fairways um i hit a lot of greens obviously um but you know i hit i hit my wedges close sometimes i hit my irons close sometimes i make um, I make a couple long putts maybe around, um, and, but literally everything's just kind of going well <laughs> in my game. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I mean, is there, is there something that started clicking for you? I mean, <clears throat> you've been out on the LPGA tour for, this is your 10th season coming up or this 2020? Uh, uh, this one's my 11th. 11th season. Yeah. Okay. So you've been on the LPJ for a while, but uh, obviously, like you're not playing bad because you're staying. <laughs> you're you have your card. You've been competing for a long time, but there hasn't been necessarily lots of wins. Mm-mm. So, is there something? You know, the fields aren't necessarily as deep, but at the same time, there's a lot of high level players that are playing in these events because everyone's like stuck. <laughs> I mean, you know, no one's playing e- either, so it's not like these are, are bad fields. 
you're just playing and winning by 16 and 14 shots. Like, so is there something that clicked in the last couple months or the extra time at home you got to figure something out or? Uh, it's, I think, um, I started to change my swing late in the season last year. Um, maybe like August, August and September, there were like small changes. Um, and then once the real off season hit, um, December, January, that's when I started to make the bigger changes. Um, and honestly, all this time off has, uh, really given me, um, a lot of time and, um, to implement it and so when i started to play in these cactus tour events um like under some you know competition it was really nice to see um my misses are better my good shots are even better um i have a lot more shots in my bag um but like overall just i cleaned up my game a lot and uh, i mean obviously i'm playing um above average um <laughs> right now like way above average right now but honestly it's just um, it's different because, um, before when I would shoot low scores, I would be doing something, um, something extraordinarily well, like whether I'm hitting like five irons to like two feet or, um, uh, making an absurd amount of footage and putts. But, um, the last few tournaments, it's just, it's not like that. It's more, um, every part of my game is just better. So, um. You know, I can get up and down if I miss the green. Um, I make putts that I need to. Um, uh, wedges are really good right now. And I'm hitting a lot farther, so. <laughs> so, so is that uh, the distance? Is that a combination, like, the new swing? Or you've been able to be in the gym more? Or a combination of both? Or A uh, combination of both. Um, I, I use my body more efficiently in my swing now. Um, but also, um, I started working with a new trainer and, um, we do a lot of things I've never done before with other trainers. So I think that's definitely helped a lot because before you, you can, you could weight lift and, um, do power training and it always translated to my driver, but never my irons. Uh, but, uh, with my new trainer, Zach, um, he's at Superstition Mountain where I practice at, even my irons got longer, so um, obviously having shorter clubs makes golf easier. So, uh, I think that's contributed too. Yeah. So as an example, like what's a Im distance improvement on some of your clubs or when you're, um, I think the one that sticks out the most is, um, so before on tour last year, if it was like a, anything over 130, 135, it'd be an eight iron. But, um, last week, um, a talking stick, I had 160 yards and it was sl slightly downwind. And I mean, obviously it's hot here, so the ball goes further. But I was like, oh, I'm going to step on this eight so that I won't go past the pin because the long was bad. <laughs> and I actually like flew 160. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I didn't think it would do that. But then um, I adjusted. Um, and it just, the rest of the week, it was like that. I, I you know, if I had 160 yards, that, you know, wind no wind or slightly downwind. I just, I'd hit an eight iron and it was good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so eight iron, eight iron is the club, huh? Open the eyes. And it, so that's, that's so wild. So what yeah, you... that's me stepping on, that's me stepping on it though. I, like that's when I don't want to go long, but um, if I hit it hard, it will go that far. And if it doesn't, you know, if I miss hit it a little bit, it'll still be just fine. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so like I a mean, smooth one, I'm sure, I think it's like just a, over 150. Yeah, which is in, a, you said, you That were, used to be like my six iron. Yeah, seven, um, like a really good seven iron or like a really soft six iron last year, so. Like a, a club and a, a club half to and two half. clubs or something? Yeah. Improvement? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, first, uh, con wow. <laughs> congrats, first of all. That's That's <laughs> awesome. I mean. It, it's and it's relate. I mean, it's translating to your play too, because like, well, I have it. I've tried to. I feel like it's been a little overplayed the whole Bryson thing. Except it, it's hard to ignore it. Like, what's going on uh -huh. with all his numbers and everything, and obviously, like, it makes a big difference when you in, <laughs> like gain distance. It does. Yeah. I mean, but, before, um, 
I've always hit my driver pretty well and um, a farther than what I look like or my swing look like, but my irons have all had always been um, sh like short, pretty short compared to my driver. So um, yeah, this year my irons are catching up to my driver and it like it all matches. Yeah, that's awesome. So you feel like, again, I get you said it, your smooth shots, they're, they're not, you're not forcing it. If you want to, you can go up and, mm -hmm. and, and swing it, get it the eight iron 160. Wow. So you said you're there at Superstition Mountain, right? Yep. I think I've noticed you have a pretty good, there's a pretty group of LPGA players out there too, right? Yep. Yeah, we have a really good group <laughs> there. <laughs> How, I feel like, let's see, I'm thinking back. I talked to Jacqueline Lee mm -hmm. um, a couple months ago, and I think that was pretty soon after you guys had like a tournament maybe there. Oh like yeah, we had a, like an exhi exhibition match. Right. How yeah. Was, how was that? Those were some really good players in that group. Yeah, um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we we get so much support from the club and um, from the members and all the staff. And um, yeah, it was just uh, a lot of people turned up. Um, maybe like 50 to 75 members were watching. Um, and it was just a really good time. Yeah. Do you think uh... – See, it's interesting because I think your off season is definitely no one. You've never had an off season this long. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just you know so long. But having that extra time to like connect with fellow like some of your fellow tour players mm -hmm. and and more time. I don't know. Like, did you get take anything from us? Because Carlotta is out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. She's she's won several very, been very successful. Um. Uh, Jennifer Cupcho, right? Yep. Is out there. Um, it's kind of different areas of spectrum as far as how long, how long uh, people have been out on tour and stuff. But yeah, did you pick up any advice or anything from people? Or uh, uh, actually, uh, I've been playing um, with Carlota a lot lately, and uh, we go to the same trainer. But we were playing a couple weeks ago, um, or maybe a month ago. And she hits these really nice, like, 40, 50-yard wedges that come off, like, really low and spinny. And so I asked her one day, I was like, uh, well, I told her, I was like, oh, I really like how you hit your wedges. And then she just started telling me how to hit them. <laughs> and she showed me. And then um, I, I worked on it, and then I brought it out um, a couple days ago, and, um, and we had a similar shot in the same hole. And... Um, yeah, I've improved a lot in that shot. So, yeah, I pick up some things here and there, but I also, um, I observe more than anything. Um, mm. See how, you know, what she does, what she has to say about um, golf and competing. So, yeah, I just like absorbing things from um, successful players. Yeah. Well, see, that's that's how I feel, um, you know, personally. Like, I'm not a professional, but watching professional players, like I feel the same way. I was, I didn't touch a club for about two months and I went out and then like my swing feels good. I know it's, my swing is not great, but like it feels good and I'm hitting uh -huh. it better. I'm like, how does this happen? I haven't <laughs> been working on it at all. But suddenly <laughs> my game's like better. Um, yeah. Short game still needs some work, but you know, like the touch stuff is kind of the, it takes the longest I think to get back after a break. But, uh, yeah, it's so strange. I think it's just from observing and then getting these mental pictures because that's all I've been able to do for the, yeah. <laughs> for a couple of months. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, awesome. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely I'll take it. Um, so, how excited are you to get back on the LPGA? Then, do you feel like it, you know if it started next week, that'd be awesome? I mean, no, barring safety and everything. Yeah, just if everything was fine, I feel like you got to be feeling pretty good to get back out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm really excited to get back out there um, because uh, I I act I've never ha um, play like put together these many um, really low scores and consecutive days and weeks. So um, I must be doing something right. So like, I'm honestly just excited to go back out um, to have a little normalcy. Yeah. Have you guys been? Walking on the Cactus Tour events, or you've been using carts? No, I've been using carts. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, you know, I know it's been over 100 degrees, but I also didn't know, like, I thought I saw carts in some of the photos and stuff, but uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't completely sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, you're a professional golfer. Like, you'll be good. <laughs> you've, you've walked a few holes. The first, yeah. 18, the first 18 that I walked, um, like, three weeks ago, <laughs> I started running the couple weeks before that, mm-hmm. but walking with my bag it was like my hamstring started like tightening up I'm like what is going on yeah <laughs> just you know a little bit of an adjustment but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't walk and carry my bag but um if i <laughs> if someone was carrying my bag for me i'd be totally yeah. fine but i do need to get into walking shape though for sure yeah yeah so i mean that's a good uh, kind of transitional point to are you planning to play in ohio yes Yes. Okay. Yes. So have you, have you thought about a process of like how you're going to start to prepare for that or yeah. What's, what's that look like for you the next um, few weeks? Like my, like golf wise. Yeah. Golf wise. Uh, if you said walking shape, like I know there is a thing like mm-hmm. you do not as much as most people cause you're staying active. You have a trainer and everything, mm-hmm. but like getting back out and walking 18 mm-hmm. holes and then 36 holes. Like it is a little bit of adjustment, I think. Mm-hmm. So do you have a plan in place to kind of start preparing for uh, the first couple of events back? Um, I think um, golf wise, like my like working on my game, um, I'm taking it easy this week and maybe um, next week and then start to ramp up three to four weeks in advance. And um, just so I don't burn out, I guess. <laughs> um but yeah, like three to four weeks definitely is a good timing for me to uh, peak at the right time. Um, but walking wise, um, my fiance Travis, um, he caddies for me on tour, but he works that superstition during off weeks and off seasons. Um, so he suggested like I just um, take one of those um, electric push carts and just like play play with that, or like he'll probably make me walk. <laughs> <laughs> with my rounds, but I, I haven't yet, but I, I think I really should because, um, I think I did. Oh, I did. I, I went to California, um, about a month ago and I played spyglass and we walked 18 holes and it was tough. <laughs> and I had a push cart too. And I, I was really struggling. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just that little bit of adjustment. I feel like you just get a, a few rounds and, and you'll start to be back into this yeah place. i think but, a couple rounds especially in the 110 degree heat ah uh, yeah yeah that too that's wild but yeah at least they have that dry heat like you know i'm here in indiana so we have all the humidity but i've seen all like you know all tour players down in florida that have like they're never in florida this time of year just like yeah you're basically never in arizona like you're hitting the heat yeah like it's the perfect place to live during the <laughs> the off season like the winter months Mm-hmm. and even the fall and spring but summer is like whew. yeah it's um it takes a couple of days to adjust like whenever the temperature jumps but um it's it's not horrible <laughs> it's doable <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean it's funny because uh like jacqueline there in canada she still had snow like it's been a i think several weeks now but it seemed like it was in april or something she's was hitting balls with snow falling. Like, uh, I did see that, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it could be, I think the heat's probably better than hitting in the snow. I don't know. I've yeah, done, for sure. I, I've done both. Also, you can hit it much further in the heat. That is, yeah. that is true, too. Um, so that three to four weeks, is that pretty typical to when you're preparing for, see, the off-season LPGA is kind of short, generally. Mm-hmm. But do you think about, is it three to four weeks usually you feel good about um, after a break? Yeah, that's, um, it seems like it because, you know, it takes like a week to, if I'm working on something, it takes like a week for me to get comfortable and then another week to implement it and then two weeks, like, and then another week to really, um, like, um, play, like playing on the golf course is totally different for me than just hitting balls. Cause if I hit balls um, for a week straight without going out to play, it's like, I kind of forget how to actually play. <laughs> okay. 
I'm like, oh, what kind of shot do I hit here? Or, you know, like, I don't remember hitting this kind of chip shot. And so, yeah, it just, um, it gives me a lot of time to do everything, basically. Right. What's like a typical practice day for you? Like, uh, just, yeah, just normal practice day. Normal practice day. Um, I, I usually start with putting because I like to just ease into it. <laughs> um, I do like five, ten minutes of um, drills, um, my setup drill to make sure my setup's the same every day. Um, work on the putting tutor to work on um, if my ball is starting um, right where I'm aimed. And then I do, then I just putt around to get the feel. Um, a lot of green reading lately. Um, where I just like stick a T where I think I need to aim and then like just easy stuff like that. <laughs> but it's like the same thing every day. Uh, then go to the range, um, work on my wedges, see what the distances are like, work on my swing, take a couple of videos to see where everything's at. And um, yeah, lately it's just kind of been the same and I haven't changed anything, which I probably does help. Um, consistency I think is huge. So, right. yeah. So then when you're back out on tour uh, during like a normal LPGA tournament week, what's your, I know they kind of vary because sometimes pro-ams take place on different days and, and it's not exactly the same, but like what's your general approach to an LPGA tournament week? Uh, uh, my, my mentality kind of is as long as I can hit the shot that needs to be hit, like, you know, hit where I need to hit it, um, I don't really need to do practice rounds. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I rarely do 18 hole practice rounds, like very rarely. Um, I'll go play nine holes if, um, to see how the course is playing, whether the greens are firmer, sand, rough, um, or play the nine that, um, is more important, I guess. And so, yeah, but other than that, it's just, I just really focus on getting the speed of the green since it's different every week. Um, how the um, cl uh, ball and club interact, um, chipping wedges and um, how far it rolls and the sand. <laughs> I got yeah. you. So is that something that you've done for a while? Is that something you learned or kind of started to do after a few years of playing or how did that come about? That kind of No, I, we started, uh, I started to do that um, a few years ago when my fiance started to caddy. It was like the second week um, he was on the bag full time. And um, he just kind of, he thought that um, that I, th I think too much, I guess. I'm a, like, I, yeah, he thinks I think too much on that course. So, um, it, and I wasn't playing particularly well at this time. And so he was like, why don't we just change things up? <laughs> <laughs> and you know just be free and just just let your game come out and so we um it was a week of Toledo yeah the Toledo event actually and we didn't do a practice round and I and I was okay with it because I was um I think I was in the middle of like a seven week stretch and I was getting tired so I was like okay we don't have to do a practice round it's fine <laughs> and I actually ended up like um top tening it and I played great Wow. Well, yeah. And that's how, that's how things start. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, I did, we did the same. Oh, and then we did the same thing when we went to the British open the next week. Um, cause I was one, I was really tired and yeah, we just walked, we walked the course and I didn't play a single practice round <laughs> and I played great that week too. <laughs> well, you know what? I think, I think there's something to it also like conserving, energy also like a little less wear and tear um mm -hmm. you also this is your 11th season so you've definitely some of the courses do change every year but like you've seen a lot of the courses it's not like you're gonna exactly. need to learn something brand new um so like it's something i've heard from some caddies and people in korea on the klpj tour for instance like there's growing up the players that you, you don't have a lot of grass so you're just pounding balls on mats mm -hmm. so that impact is a different, I guess, wrist injuries are kind of common, things like that. But I like the tour forces, I think almost every week, like there's Monday, the course is closed. Like players can't, 
they probably they might practice anyway at a range or something, but they can't go to the next tournament course. So kind of like a forced like a forced day off kind of. Yeah. Um, which honestly I think is I think some I guess fine, everyone's unique, right? Like they have their mm -hmm. own people like to practice and like to play. They love golf and that's they wouldn't want to be like there's not other things they really want to do. Like that's all of it's fine, but it's you know finding that right balance for you. So I think that's a that's a good strategy. And I yep. 2020 is a uh, you know not quite to the LPJ season. Well, return to the LPJ season yet, but can't argue with the results this, to this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone you know has their own ways of preparing and um, or like ways of being able to play better and me i like to um conserve energy more than anything so <laughs> it works for me i hear you okay so i want to go back in time a little bit to your rookie year um it's actually kind of funny i stumbled across a what was it called it's like introducing i think it was on golf channel it's like a little clip of you um like spotlight rookie spotlight i think was, was what it was called do you remember this uh vaguely i just <laughs> <laughs> i thought it would be interesting to see if you um if anything's changed so you mentioned <laughs> in this rookie spotlight you're talking about i think they asked you like your favorite television show and you said south uh -huh. park you said <laughs> south park <laughs> where <laughs> Is that is that still uh, your favorite show, or uh, things change a little bit in the last uh, ten years? Um, I'm, I still love South Park. I think it's hilarious, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, and I have a couple of South Park quotes that I always say, like on a daily basis. But um, it is still one of my favorites. But I actually haven't watched it in like the last year and a half. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and then your your um your music taste. Let's see. You mm -hmm. said you said. You like songs with good lyrics, and you like to listen to, let's see, Matchbox 20, Goo Goo Dolls, and Three Doors Down. <laughs> <laughs> I still do like them, but yeah, they're not my favorite, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I mean, that's just interesting, because I think we all have like a little transition in um, music taste and every, or taste in anything, really. Um, some yeah, things I didn't say, that's but... definitely changed my music taste, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really cool, though, to just see, like, this uh, kind of go back in time, like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so rookie year 2010, you're coming off a, a very successful amateur career. Like, also the, the energy you had in that little spotlight. You're talking about, um, let's see, H is it age 12 you won your first California Women's Amateur? Yeah. <laughs> first of four, four straight? Yep. Wow. So, like, okay, I guess we can talk, talk about that for a second. Okay. So, you went to your – you started your amateur career or in your amateur career. You're super, super successful. Where – did you have any idea? Um, or like, when did <sighs> – Sorry. <laughs> I'm going all over the place. We got the thoughts real quick. Okay. When did you realize that like, you were really good at golf? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. Hard to hard to say. Um, I, when I was twelve, I definitely didn't know it. I was just, you know. I was 12. I was like, oh, I'm playing golf. This is fun. I won. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Probably when I was in high, probably in high school. Um, I mean, when I, even now, but um, a lot of my friends were like top junior golfers as well. Um, and so, or I've, I've always competed against older kids so like when i first started playing ajg i think i was 13 or 14 but like all these girls who were you know 16 17 18 i was like wow they're so good and then uh, once i got to that age um i was like oh, okay yeah i'm pretty good too <laughs> so you're, you're that's so funny yeah i'm pretty good 
Um, <laughs> after after this is after you won like three or four at this point, uh, California women's amateurs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I'm pretty good. So when did when did like professional aspirations or dreams start? Uh, when I was twelve, but um, <laughs> I definitely. I think it was around, it, it must have been after I won, but um, I think the thrill of winning and competing, um, I was like, hey, this is really fun. Like, I really want to do this. And um, that's when I really started to um, work, like have my dreams become, you know, my dream to become a professional golfer. So that's when my, um, I guess, mindset, mindset shifted. I got gotcha. you. Were there any... Did you play any other sports growing up and then like you transitioned to only golf or did you play other things too? Uh, not really. Uh, the f first sport I ever did was swimming. And um, I, I do remember being pretty good at swimming when I was little. Um, so I started when I was like six and I would go to swim meets and um, be on a swim team and, you know, go to all those pr uh, morning and <laughs> evening practices <laughs> by the time I was 12 I uh, 11 or 12 I told my mom I was like mom I'm tired of going back and forth in the pool <laughs> I want to do something else and so um my parents worked a lot so they're like well we need to find something for you to do after school and um she stuck me in a Salvation Army Junior Golf Clinic <laughs> and after that I was like hey this is the golf is really cool and fun Wow. Were you, were you pretty natural there at the beginning? Uh, I, th yeah, I think so. I, um, it sounds weird, but I don't remember being bad at it. Like, Cause if I, honestly, if I was bad at it, I don't think I would have kept going, kept on with it. That's right. just kind of the type of person I am. I'm like, Oh, I suck at this. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> wow. Making golf golfers around the world jealous <laughs> it's like i don't remember being bad yeah no but that that makes sense i mean it makes sense that you're a professional golfer now too because if you're never i mean i was i mean i was bad i remember like um I, ha I found a little golf journal from when i was like young little and it'd be like um you know, oh i you know today i shot 45 woohoo like three strokes better than that you know two days ago <laughs> <laughs> or like I but I specifically remember like having there's a par three course um and I'd shoot like 50 <laughs> on a par 27 and then like but I'd be so excited to go play um and the next time because I'd try to you know chip away at my best score but like, okay 50 okay I shot 48 today I shot 46 today and um but yeah yeah well okay it's relatively relatively speaking though like you're you're bad. Most people start playing golf like you're not gonna shoot par. If if you find someone no, who that's does true. that, like it, <laughs> I I don't know who that person is, but I don't think they exist or have ever existed. But mm -hmm. like you said, and it, I think golf is really cool because at the beginning, especially at the beginning, you can start to make see noticeable differences relatively like relatively quickly, especially mm -hmm. if you. I mean, just by, I guess, um, self-teaching, but if you get some people guiding you too, like, hey, hold the club like this. Hey, you should swing a little, uh -huh. bit, li little bit like this. And then all of a sudden, you know, instead of three-putting every green, you start two-putting every green. And, and you, don't, yeah, yeah. you don't chunk chips anymore. You, you, all these things uh -huh. start to add up. So 50 dropping down, like it's – and it's always fun to do better, like to see that result, yeah. right? Exactly. So that was like I, the most fun time, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I had the moment. Um, I started to play golf a lot when I was like 16. Like I played when I was really young, but I was a baseball player. And mm -hmm. then something happened um, where I just like got hooked on golf. You know, it's you probably haven't experienced it because you've loved been playing golf most of your life. But, like, the golf bug is real. Like, it hits you, and you just, like, can't <laughs> stop. So, huh. so that's, that's what happened. Um, and it actually negatively impacted my baseball game, which was kind of unfortunate because I was 
still planning on playing college baseball at that time. But anyway, it's fine. Golf, <laughs> golf is great. Golf is great. Yeah. So when I was like 18 or 19, I finally decided to get a lesson because like I hadn't mm-hmm. ever taken a lesson. I just watched videos all the time. And that first, after like one lesson, it was like, oh my God. It's like hitting the ball so much better. And it's like, why didn't I get a coach a long time ago or have someone just give me a lesson yeah. that could have improved. So like those big jumps are so yeah. much fun. Um, I feel like they don't necessarily happen as much as you get, you know, the better you get at golf. However, exactly. look, look at you. You're That's true. <laughs> this is a big jump. <laughs> you're like breaking the mold. What? Yeah. I saw what another one of those statistics averaging like 66 point something. Your score in the last those eighteen yeah. rounds, like what the heck? Anyway, um, that's really amazing. So you, so you, so you get your rookie year. Um, let's see, you you turned pro in two thousand nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, two thousand nine. Yeah, that was my first year, uh, year playing Symmetra Tour. Okay, so mm-hmm. and I think I saw you had like three wins. Yep. And then you get so you get to the LPJ 2010. What what were your kind of thoughts, if you can remember some of your thoughts going into um, that first year on tour? And like, what what your career was kind of looking like at that point? Um, it was I was super excited my um, rookie year, um, and coming off um, a successful symmetric tour year, um, you know I felt like I was ready, but then. Um, when I got there, it was kind of a shock because, um, there were so many girls who like, I, I had never heard of, um, a lot of girls cause they were either older or from other countries. Um, and so all of a sudden there was a lot of people I, I didn't know and, or had heard of who were kicking my butt. <laughs> so, um, that was kind of a shock and, um, it was a, an adjustment, but, um, I was able to keep my, um, card my rookie year, um, barely, but, um, but yeah, I kept my job and then, but the next year, um, was significantly easier. I remember I was like, you know, I know where to go or to stay. I knew the, um, you know, be, being a rookie and seeing, um, all new courses every single week, it, it is tough. It can wear on you. So, um, the second and third years were, um, much easier. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I feel like at that time, too, if I'm remembering correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, that was like when Yanni was like dominating, right? That, uh, I think uh, I think Yanni dominated. Or is that right at like, the end of it? Right. No, that was towards the beginning. So towards the I beginning started, of it? She started dominating like 2000, maybe 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. So okay. um, when I came on, like Nyan was really like. Oh top. yeah, yeah. Uh, Nyan was like one of the top, or um, yeah. I got you. So, um, what are some thoughts on your career career to this point? Oh, uh, when you, when you I, look back. When I look back, uh, definitely, uh, I don't. I haven't lived up to my expectations. Um, probably a lot of other people's expectations, um, but. I mean, I feel like I've matured. It took me a while, but I feel like I've matured a lot the last few years um, on and off the course. And um, especially the, um, this past season, I finally had the time and the um, the thought like I to change my swing because it obviously wasn't working. Um, but yeah, like I knew what I had to do and I was like, well, we're going to make the most of however many years I have left and um, now I'm playing better than ever. And um, even though I'm 30, I don't, I don't feel like I'm 30. So um, who knows? I might have another 10 years in me. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's uh, <laughs> it's like a, the next, the next stage. We hear that a lot, like different stages of careers, but mm-hmm. I think uh, you're at a turning point. I mean, shoot, it, winning is winning and <laughs> putting, putting together Four wins and, and five starts. So it's four wins this year, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So 
going into 2020, what were, what were some of your goals? Are you a goal oriented person? Is that something that you do? Uh, I don't no, I don't really make specific goals. Um, I never have been the type to, um, I just want to play good golf. <laughs> I just want to compete. Um, but yeah, just, I think looking back on, uh, previous years is just, um, hitting, you know, hitting fairways, obviously, but, um, hitting a lot more greens, making my misses like just this way instead of, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, I just play good golf, compete, have a good head on my shoulders, um, are all good goals for me this year. Yeah. Did, so did you have any career, career goals? Um, I guess when you started and, and at this point, do you have any goals that you would like to accomplish before you do call it a career? Hopefully in many, many years from now. <laughs> um, oh, when I first got out here, I was like, I want to be the number one player. I want to play Solheim. I want to, you know, do this. I want to win that. And, um, but yeah, uh, but now it's a little different, but, um, I definitely want to have a major win, um, win a major, um, that that's definitely a, a goal before I'm done playing. Um, and I definitely want to play in a Solheim cup before I'm done. Yes. Sounds good. Solheim yeah. cup. Oh my goodness. It, I've, I've been to one, the one in 2017 and it's just that environment is mm -hmm. amazing. So Yes, I would love to see you teed up at a Solheim Cup too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking back, what do you have any uh, favorite stories um, from your from your time on tour to this point? Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't, how about, I don't know if I should share that with some of that. <laughs> oh well, yeah, you know, they're kind of funny though regarding other players, but um, I got you. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, so example um, could be like a traveling story, uh, a story from a pro am, or a story uh, something funny that happened on the golf course. Or <laughs> uh, I have a couple of good pro am stories. Um, okay. So I for I don't remember when and where it was, but I remember specifically with this one group, and they were not very good. <laughs> and this guy you know had a driver and it was on a tee and he chunked it so bad it hit so far behind the ball that his divot actually hit the ball off the tee what <laughs> and i laughed so and i could and i was like i'm so sorry but that i've never seen that happen before i didn't know that's possible <laughs> you know um uh, that was like the best, um, f the funniest like golf shot I've seen. Another pro am, um, uh, these I was playing with three women and a gentleman, and I think they were like customers of this gentleman. Like, um, they were sa sales rep, and they were like dressed like brand new Nike shirts, like they're you know Nike, brand new Nike shoes, and they like brand new set of golf clubs and I'm like oh wow I'm good to play some you know ladies and I'm like hey I, like how often do you guys play golf and he goes this is the first time we have ever been on a golf course or ever hit a ball I was like wow <laughs> you sure looked the part <laughs> that was probably like the most shocking um group because like they looked great they totally yeah. looked the part and um but yeah they're like this is the first time we have ever step foot on a golf course or hit a ball dang you know yeah. look look good play good if you look exactly. good you know yeah but they you know they made contact and one of them was actually like pretty good at putting like the concept of because i've played with pro man people where they you know they haven't played much golf or any golf at all and like the concept of um hitting a putt a certain distance just was not there <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like, um, well, not to throw my sister under the bus, but, like, that's kind of something <laughs> that whenever we go to, like, putt-putt or something, like, yeah. It's just, it's strange because I, I feel pretty good about, like, concept of putting, speed mm -hmm. control and everything. But it's hard, so it's hard to kind of imagine not having that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, kind of, I, especially like you, would, 
talk about not remembering being bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you just, I've always had it. But it is interesting, like, oh, my dad, I should, I'll throw my dad out of the bus. Like, he'll just, like, blow a putt, like, a 15-foot putt, like, 15 feet by, and, like. Yeah. And you're, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, come on, dad. Uh, but, you know, it takes a little time. It does take some practice. Uh -huh. if, you, if you're not out there, you know, I understand. You can't, it won't give them too hard a time. <laughs> um, what's been your favorite tour stop? Um, there's a couple, um, I've always enjoyed, um, the tournament in Arkansas. It's just a very well-run tournament. Love the golf course. I have a great host family that lives on the golf course, um, that I've known since I was, um, 14, um, years old and, um, what else? But yeah, I just, the atmosphere, um, you know, how they always have, like concerts going for the players or, or, you know, the general public. Um, but yeah, it's just a very well-run tournament. I love that. Um, my newer favorite ones are um, the LA and San Fran events. Cause West coast and it's just um, two great golf courses. Um, my family can come watch me in San Francisco um, and great food. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> The most important part. Yes, that the West Coast is my that's my favorite. I have family in LA, so getting to see that I get to see them whenever I I was so sad like, that I was actually on my way before like everything started here, on my way to LA the week before uh, Founders Cup. Oh, I was like I already had my in and out days picked out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, ready to go. But yeah. Oh, that's like a whole other category, though, when you start to break down tour sauce by food. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. So are those two, like, your favorite ones also, then, for that category? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What about on the, like, Asia swings? Um, I love the Korea events, because I can eat Korean food all the time. Um, and Japan, of course. Um, yeah, Japan and Korea. Japan's number one. Korea's number two, for sure when it comes to food like I think I gained so much weight during those weeks because I just want to eat everything that I can while I'm there <laughs> that's all right I mean look it, it's pretty healthy food though I think it's not like for the most part yeah for the most part I mean if you eat a lot of anything it could be bad but I think yeah. it's, it's pretty healthy food too um okay so just a few more questions for you mm -hmm. um so if you, if you do look back to this point, what are some lessons that you've learned uh, over the last few years? Uh, what are the lessons? I think, I think the biggest one is um, my attitude on the golf course and um, my uh, mentality, I guess, <laughs> is, um, as a whole. Um, Cause I, I, I'd like to say I used to be because I, I, uh, I do get hot headed a little bit, but I feel like I'm um, managing it a lot better. Um, but sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, no barking. Um, but yeah, for sure. My, the way I carry myself, the way I look at um, view things on the golf course, um, trying not to, just try not to get in my own way because I when I I get really frustrated or upset or angry um, if I'm not playing well and um, it kind of like I feel like I'm like a volcano when that happens like I can't help but it come out but um, I've been able to keep it at bay lately especially um, I've been working with a new performance coach and um, I really like her approach to things and um, instead of saying, you know, oh, bad feelings are like bad to feel, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. She's like, acknowledge it and be okay with it. Just accept like, yeah, I am nervous today or I am anxious or yes, that shot made me really upset, but let's, what are you going to do about it now? Kind of just try to be more logical. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's some advice that you would give to some aspiring golfers? 
just in general or uh or yeah yeah like, just in general i think um well if they're we're like junior golfers if they're if they're really you know trying to become better i think um finding the um finding a swing coach and you know early on so that you don't um develop bad habits i think that's super important like to get a teacher right away um but most of all honestly it's like you got to have fun um golf's got to be really fun for you um whether it's the joy of competing um the social aspect of it you know like seeing your friends at tournaments um the joy of improving um but yeah you just gotta find what's fun for you in golf and like what makes you look forward to going to the golf course every day yeah i agree with both of those um especially the coach part because you know maybe i my life would be different <laughs> <laughs> i i only say that because my mom was actually like that was a huge thing i remember when i first started going to like a first few clinics um my mom's like if you really want to you know get better or do this or be play golf in high school she goes let's get you a coach so that you're right on the right track right away so um, that really stuck with me and i think it does help yeah i think that applies to like life in general or activities in general like not being afraid to ask for help something that mm -hmm. i struggle with a lot <laughs> just like hey it can speed up the process a lot and it and, can, yeah and also especially in a sport like golf if you get frustrated early on you might not continue playing and exactly and so having someone that can still like make it fun and help you see improvements a little bit faster like i think that is important um what's your favorite part about being a professional golfer um i used to say it's the travel <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, cause I, I've been fortunate enough to go to a lot of cool places, um, and see a lot of different, um, sites and, um, you know, whether it's going to Australia, Thailand, um, Singapore, Japan, uh, I don't know, I, I was going to Japan when I was a kid too, but still, um, I love going back there, but, um, yeah, the, you get to see and go to a lot of cool places. Um, now, um, now that our tour gets to go to um, really cool golf courses and, you know, different stops where um, the men have played um, and, you know, where there's rich history. I think I really get a kick out of that now. Um, yeah. Like where we, you know, wherever the guys play, whether it's Oakmont, um, uh, Royal Lytham. Um, and then I'm really excited for the upcoming U.S. Opens. I like get um, Olympic club, Pebble beach. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So are you a, I don't know the right term for this, like a golf course junkie or like the golf courses? Is that something that you, something that you enjoy, like playing well-known <laughs> golf courses? Uh, yeah, I, I always have liked to, but um, Travis is like actually a huge golf nerd and golf junkie. <laughs> I think he kind of rubbed off on me where now I'm just like, yeah, you know, this is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we got to play when I was in California. We played Pasa Tiempo in Santa Cruz, and I played it when I was little, um, when I was 12. Um, but then being able to go back now, I appreciated it so much more. Like, I, was like, this is, I was like, this is a really awesome golf course. Like, Alistair McKenzie's house was, like, on the – on hole number five or six and I was just like looking in <laughs> so yeah I think but I think it's definitely something that happens when you're older you appreciate golf courses yeah um well first of all like need to have a conversation with Travis sometime I would like to talk to to both of you we could bounce oh, he's, here. <laughs> he's here <laughs> <laughs> we could have some uh bounce some stories off like I think it's really cool when you have people that can you know, you kind of fill in spaces like, oh, no, you remember that? Oh, like, no, this was the fun part about that or things like that. Um, oh, I do have a, f uh, speaking of, um, back to when you were talking about stories. So, yeah. um, Travis is a very, um, 
more aggressive player than I am. Um, <laughs> so we, we have disagreements mostly like on part fives. Um, <laughs> and uh, do you know Aviara number eight, the par five? Uh, I haven't not made it to Aviara yet, but oh, you uh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm so sad. It's, so it's, it's a, it's a yeah. downhill par five and like the, the whole hole has a downhill Y and I have like, I think I must've had like 200 or 210 to get to the, he says 190, like 200 to the pin, but I hadn't been hitting, hitting well, like all day. And like my miss was hitting behind the ball and there's water in front. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I already made up my mind. I was going to lay up and he was like grumpy that I was not going for it. And so it made me mad. And then, um, but I went and made birdie anyway by laying up, but I've done that probably like four or five times where he's just like, why aren't you going for it? And I'm like, no, this is what I'm going to do. And I get pissed off. <laughs> I make birdie anyway. <laughs> well, shoot. You might, um, might be in a little more trouble this year. Now that you're hitting it further. You're yeah. not, you're <laughs> Maybe I will go for it more often. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. So what are a couple, What are a few, a few of your favorite courses you've played then? You mentioned the course there in Pasa Tiempo, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, just in general or like on tour? Uh, you could do both. Okay. Um, in general, my favorite course is Cypress Point um, in Pebble Beach. It's just another Alistair McKenzie golf course, but um, it's short. I think it's only like 6,500 from the tips, but it's so hard <laughs> without it, without it being um, tricked up. So I think it's just a very like well-designed golf course um, and the prestige of it. But I think, yeah, it's the toughest, shortest golf course I've played. Um, and on tour, um, I really like Wilshire. It's, yeah. it's, it's really different. Um, and you, you got to hit um, – you got to be able to hit shots there. Like, you can't just blast it everywhere and, you know, hit wherever you want to go. You have to um, really plot your way around it, I feel like. Yeah, because ironically, um, I actually – or I don't know if ironic is the right word. But I, I have actually played Wilshire, and ah. so it's the only course that I actually I could actually talk about <laughs> and, like, actually <laughs> relate to any of you guys yeah. out on tour. But, um, yeah, I agree. I feel like the, like these little water hazards, like the little, like, creek thing. Like, like on, um, yeah, like on, um, one, two, three. Yeah. And then, yeah, um, right. it, it kind of comes into play on, what is it? They play it as 17. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The it's kind of long because it goes straight out, but then to the right. Right. I mean, yeah, correct, but the correct. water, yeah, cuts across on the left. Yeah. That is but a tough hole. <laughs> that, that hole, so when I played, it was a pro-am that I played in. Um, it was like a media day pro-am thing. And I actually did, um, I missed it so far right that I, I was on the fairway on, what is, <laughs> what is, what is, uh, what is that hole? Um, anyway. <laughs> Ended up working out well because our group had like, like pitching wedge in, just because. Only time, like, but you're right. For the most part, that golf course you can't do that. Like, yeah, it was just the uh, one time. So yeah, I like the Wilshire course. I wonder if they play as an inbound um, on course. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it could be OB. It could be OB in the yeah when we play it. Yeah, because I because I mean yeah, well, why not go that way. <laughs> <laughs> um are there any courses that you really would like to play um i want to play augusta one day yeah definitely I, I haven't even been just to watch so um but from what i've heard it's like way more hilly than um than what you could see on tv so um that'd be fun um i want to play i don't yeah i haven't played wing foot i think that'd be awesome um, oh, in San Francisco Golf Club. I I don't know anyone there, so um, and that's a really hard one to get onto. <laughs> I got you. Are you a fan of uh, Lynx Golf at all? Um, it's okay. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> it's, I mean, uh, it's, it can be fun actually. Um, you have to think a lot more for sure. Yeah. Or you have to be creative. Like you have to, um, be really creative and, um, I'm not that creative when it comes to playing. So, um, like I really like tree line golf courses. So it's kind of like, Oh, I can't go over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you've been doing well out in the desert. They don't have a lot of trees out. No, oh, but, right. um, <laughs> desert, but there's desert. You don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Final question. What are you looking forward to the most? getting uh when the tour gets started again uh just the thrill of competing um oh yeah but i guess there's no uh fans <laughs> oh no no there, there will be fans in toledo but yeah just um getting out and competing um with the best in the world and see where i stack up now um yeah i just want to play it's um especially I, I do like toledo the golf course is um it's old school, so it's neat. Um, just the area, so much support from that city. Um, and I think it's a great place to start. Yeah, yeah, you're right about all of those things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, though, do you have, like, a good uh, a good fan memory? A fan yeah. memory from yeah. there? Yeah, or anywhere. No, anywhere. Just, like, good, bad, funny... Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, like in Japan, um, after I played, um, for some reason, I guess it's a thing, um, fans bring gifts to their favorite players, and uh, I got a couple of gifts, and it was, like, really cool. I was super <laughs> excited and happy. <laughs> wow, that is awesome, especially, yeah. when you're not, especially when you're not expecting it. <gasps> yeah, yeah, they just give me a bag, and I'm like, oh, can I take this? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Mina, I appreciate you spending some of your afternoon talking with me. And, yeah, uh, thanks, Ben. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I look forward to, I think I'll be in Toledo. Okay. I, it's about a four-hour drive for, for me to get there. So oh. I'm just, you know, seeing how it, it's all dependent on, you know, obviously everything that's going on. But I'm hoping to be there because otherwise I don't know when the next chance I'll have. Right. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, awesome. if I don't well, see if you're you for there, them, just, uh, come find me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. You and Travis be there too, right? Yep, he's coming. Mr. Caddy? Yep. Caddy fiance. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely come say hey. And if I don't see you or talk to you before then, best of luck. Thank um, you. And yeah, and have a great rest of your break, I guess. And then <laughs> back in we'll the grind mode. Yeah, all right. <laughs> see Thanks, Ben. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to episode five of Pitching It With Ben. If you liked what you heard, please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. See you in episode six.